Hi, and you're very welcome to today's video, which is going to talk us through the structure of the Leave Insert Biology exam for 2023 and any changes which we need to keep in mind for the final exam in June. So for the layout of the exam, there's three sections as always. We section A, which is the short answer questions, section B, which is the experiment questions, and section C, which is the long answer questions. Now, section A, there's seven questions within section A. This used to be six, it's up to seven. You're only required to answer any five. Okay, your best five are going to count. Each question carries 20 marks, given a total of 100 marks or 25% of the final grade. Section B is the experiment questions. These are worth 15%. There are three experiment questions. You're only required to answer two. Each one carries 30 marks. And then section C is the long answer questions. This is worth 60% of your final grade. There are seven questions here, similar to the short questions. You're only required to answer four. Each question this time carrying 60 marks. Now the last two questions have internal choice. The last two questions prior to COVID used to have parts A, B and C. This has been increased to A, B, C and D. Okay, so questions 16 and 17 will have parts A, B, C and D. If you choose to answer either or both of those questions as two of, or one of the four questions that you want to do, you only have to answer two parts. Okay, your best two parts in those particular questions will count because each part is worth 30 marks. But in total, each long question is worth 60, giving us a total marks available of 400. Now we're going to quickly look at the course structure because this is actually really important for the layout of the final exam and can also help you to maximise your marks within the final exam as well. So we have three units in the biology syllabus. We have unit one, we have unit two, we have unit three. Unit one comprises of just three topics, scientific method, food and ecology. Unit two, a little bit longer, we have everything to do with the cell, we have DNA and RNA in there. We also have photosynthesis and respiration, two of the biggest topics. And then unit three, we can see there's a huge amount of content in there. It goes from the kingdoms of life, we have all of the animal systems, we have plants, massively big topics in there. Now, just visually examining all of that, we can see that unit one is considerably smaller than the other two units. But that is actually really important for us when we move from the core structure to the exam layout. So how does this translate across? Well, if we look at the sections that we have in the exam, we have short questions, we have experiment questions, and we have long questions. Now, all of this is related prior to COVID, but it still stands. There's just gonna be extra questions coming in here as well. So in the short answer questions, two come from unit one, two are gonna come from unit two, and two are gonna come from unit three. So from food, the scientific method, and ecology, those three topics, two short questions have to be answered on them. The experiments are going to vary, but one long question is going to have to be answered on uh, food, ecology and scientific method, two on the unit two questions and three on the unit three questions. Now, obviously, with the extra questions, that could change slightly as well. There might be more questions from unit one, more from unit two, more from unit three, but that's the minimum that's going to be asked. OK, now the importance of the table above is the fact that unit one comprises just three topics, food, scientific method and ecology. It's the shortest of the three. But given that you'll be able to answer two short questions and a long question, totaling 100 marks on just those three topics, those three topics account for 25% of the exam. OK, so even if you just know those three inside out and upside down, that's 25% of your final exam. So given the fact that two short questions and one long question will be asked about these, I would highly recommend knowing those three in detail. Obviously, everything else is important as well, but those three are especially important for me. There are about 22, 23 experiments in the course. Food tests obviously break it up. The enzyme experiments are very similar to each other as well. Um, so if you combine the experiments with covering unit one, you have a total of 40%. So just from knowing those three topics, as well as your experiment questions, you have passed the exam. Okay, and then everything else then after that, obviously will bring your mark up. Now, this may change slightly with the additional question for this year's exams, but that's gonna be the bare bones of it. There's gonna be one from unit one and short questions, two from unit two, uh, sorry, two from unit one, two from unit two, two from unit three, one long question from unit one, two from unit two, and three from unit three, and then the extra questions could be any one of those units. The experiments obviously vary, but there is changes within the experiments as well, which we'll get to now in a second. So some tips for the short answer questions. I would generally, out of the three hours, allocate about 30 minutes for this. You only have to answer five out of the seven questions, but I would recommend to answer all questions if you can, because your best five are going to be scored. And they are short answer questions at the end of the day. So a lot of the time, one word or very few words are going to be su sufficient for, uh, for full marks here. Know your definitions and get straight to the point. These short answer questions are not room for a waffle. You don't have any space for that. You have to get straight to the point and know your keywords and definitions 
inside out and upside down. It's the key word that the examiner is looking for here. So I'd recommend reading through all the questions and putting a question mark or an X beside the questions you're unsure of and come back to these at the end. If in doubt, guess, because if you leave something blank, you're guaranteed no marks. If you put something down, sometimes it's just one word the examiner is looking for. So there's a possibility of some marks if you put something down. And the big thing with short answer questions is to practice, practice, practice. The questions are very, very repetitive. Even from last year, the whole way back to whenever the exam first started, they're very repetitive. So try every single exam question you can get your hands on, whether it's a state exam question or a mock exam question, because you will see some similarities between them all. For the experiments, there are three questions here with two to be answered. They're worth 15% of your final grade. You should have time to answer all of them. So if you can do and your best questions will be awarded, Again, I would recommend knowing all the experiments in detail, but if you are struggling with the content of the experiments, the new changes will help with that. And just to keep in mind, I suppose the more common um, experiment questions which have come up, it's generally the scientific method, preparing the animal and plant cell slides, the isolation of DNA, the germination experiments, and the enzyme experiments. They seem to come up more often than the others. Now, this is just a breakdown of all of the experiment questions which have come up between the 2013 exam and the 2022 exam. So I know this is a little bit difficult to read over here, but I will talk you through it. You can see by far some of the more common ones here is the scientific method. So again, that's coming from unit one, generally appears as a part A of a question. So that would be the six marker generally at the start of a question. The animal and plant cell experiment has come up an awful lot there in the last couple of years. So that's a really important one there as well. Um, <clears throat> if we have a look up here at the isolation of DNA from a plant tissue, the growth regulator one there is really important. And as you work your way down through, um, you can see that the experiments kind of pop up here, there and everywhere. So um, you could actually look at which experiments haven't come up in quite some time. So the, the breathing rate and the pulse rate hasn't come up in a while. The germination one hasn't come up in a couple of years and that generally was a popular experiment. And we could look up here that preparing the transverse section of a dicot stem. It's been a couple of years before that's come up as well. So um, do keep an eye on the trends there because you would spot which experiments generally come up more often than others and which ones will be probably more likely to come up given the fact that they haven't come up in a while. Now, I would just mention as well, over the last couple of years for the experiments, generally what they have done, maybe before COVID happened, generally only three or four experiments will come up. You'd have two questions maybe based on one experiment in, the, in its entirety. And then the third experiment question would kind of be a mix, mix and match approach where they ask loads of small questions about a variety of different experiments. That seems to be coming more than norm now. The first experiment question seems to be maybe one question from five or six different experiments. Um, the second question somewhat the same, and then the third question is, is one full experiment, but it is important to know them. There are a couple more changes as well, which will help with the content, which I'll go through on the next slide. So we have been given some guidance as to which questions are gonna come up where. So question eight, we've been told, are either going to be the food tests, the habitat study, the preparing and examining the animal and plant cells using the light microscope, or the isolation of DNA from a plant tissue. Question nine is prepare and show the production of alcohol by yeast, the photosynthesis experiment, the enzyme experiments, uh, heat denaturation on enzymes as well, and then the osmosis experiment. And then for question 10, it's the growth of leaf yeast, using the agar plates, the preparing the transverse section of a dicot stem, the dissection of the heart, the exercise on breathing rate or pulse rate, the IAA experiment, using starch agar or skim milk plates to show the digestive activity during germination, or the effect of water, oxygen and temperature on germination. So we've been told which topics are coming up or which experiments are coming up with each individual question. So if you were really, really struggling with the experiment questions and you're like, do you know what? I'm actually really confident on the experiments within question eight and question nine, you could potentially leave out question 10. I'm not recommending that, but you do know which experiments are going to come up where, which is a massive help because years ago we didn't know that. Now, section C, the long questions, again, spent up to about two hours here. Read through each question to help you decide which ones are best to answer. That should say, uh, say four there. Um, I would recommend reading through each question to help you decide which ones to answer because you might look at the part A of a question and be like, yeah, I know that. That doesn't mean you're able to answer the part B and the part C. So be really, really careful and read through the entire question first because you might be able to start off really well on a question, but you might answer really poorly towards the end and you might be already three quarters of the way through before you realise, oh no, I'm actually not that great at this question. I would have been better putting all this time into this other question, which I actually know all of. So make sure and read through them and circle the ones which you know you're going to answer best. You have to answer four questions. If you have time, answer an extra, but definitely make sure you're including enough information for those four. 
make sure you include enough points for full marks so everything generally is going to be marked in threes sometimes there will be bits of twos and fours there but mostly threes so if you see a six mark question definitely be aiming for at least two points there um, and just keep a simple exam technique in mind there if it asks you to list two factors list two factors don't list three don't list four because if you list three and one of them is wrong it's going to cancel out with one of your correct answers genetics photosynthesis and respiration ecology they're all very common topics so make sure you look over those and again practice 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 exam papers and marking schemes should be your best friend in the lead up to the exam so you should be inseparable from them and attempting every single question within those exam papers every mock question you can get your hands on do them once do them twice do them a third time do them so that you can do them you know what the answer you know what the next question is going to be before you even look um, you know what the answer is going to be in the marking scheme before you even look that's the point you need to get to with the biology exam papers so some general tips then before the exam relax all questions have to be based on something you've covered in class you're not going to be asked something that you've not seen before it may just be phrased slightly differently you will have seen all of the content before read the question carefully is the question asking you to state or list or explain the difference in the question word there can dictate how much you're expected to write so just be careful of that use a diagram if you can as the saying goes a picture paints a thousand words and this can really help with your explanation and answers for timing if you get stuck move on the time that you spend agonizing over one question you can't do is taking time away from answering questions you might be able to do further on in the paper and as i said exam papers should be your main focus practice them over and over and over again and make sure you're using the american schemes to grade them and just to finish off i'm just going to show you around the exam revision website which would be really beneficial for you in the lead up to exams not just for biology but for all of your subjects so each subject is going to have video tutorials quizzes presentations and exam builder and a resource pack so if we just click in here, we'll go into unit one, we'll just pick ecology. It doesn't matter which one you pick, there's going to be video tutorials for you to watch covering the entire Leave and Cert biology course. Down here towards the bottom, we can see that we have MCQ quizzes. So you click into that, there'll be a multiple choice questionnaire based on all of the content associated with that particular topic. So you can test your knowledge and see what you might have to go back over and revise. Further down then, we can see here that we have PowerPoint presentations, so you can use those to access extra notes. We do also have resource packs for the entire content, entire curriculum as well. So these are packs of H1 notes, which you can download and print and keep for your revision. And then finally, we do also have our exam builder as well. So not only does this have every state exam question, which has come up, it also has every mock exam question, which has come up as well. So for every single topic, you'll be able to sit down, create your own exam and test out your knowledge. Now, just to go back to the home screen really quickly here, do keep an eye out for our live revision courses as well. They will all happen at the midterm breaks and also May, June in the lead up to exams as well, as well as all of our Saturday sessions, which are held every Saturday. So keep an eye on all of our social media for announcements for those. And I hope to see you all soon. The very best of luck in the preparation for your exam and in the completion for your exams over the coming months.